Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the April 11th Blackstone Millville Regional School District School Committee meeting. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We'll start with an introduction of members. Ted Novio Millville. Dan Keefe, Blackstone. Matt Catalano, Millville. Tara Scobie, Blackstone. Tara Larkin, Millville. Joe Spagna, Director Very of Finance. Very good at Blackstone. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> she told me to. <laughs> Joe Spagna, Director of Finance and Operations. Jill Pilligalarani, Assistant Superintendent, Director of Student Services. And Jason DeFalco, Superintendent. Uh, we don't have our student reps this evening. They are actually at a conference on the Cape. Uh, that was postponed until today, so they're representing BMR at the state uh, conference. We have one more. You want to do your <clears throat> introduction? Charles Dunton, Blackstone. Uh, this is our reorganization <clears throat> meeting, um, so I will entertain a motion for a uh, chairperson for the Blackstone Millville Regional School District School Committee for the 24 25 uh, year. Mr. Superintendent, I, I uh, nominate uh, Dan Keefe as chairperson, please. Dan Keefe, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Do you accept the nomination, Mr. Keefe? I suppose so. I think we have to do a, a um, roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. All right, congratulations, Mr. Keith. Oh, Carrie, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I can miss you. You're right there. <laughs> Bring a name card too, Dan. Yeah, Dan, if you want to switch your oh. name plate here. I get to do the rest. And All righty. I'm going to turn the rest of this over to you, Mr. Keith. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we'll entertain uh, nominations for the vice chair of the Black Hill Miller Regional School District School Committee. I nominate Tara Larkin for vice chair. I second it. Motion made by Tara, uh, seconded by Ted. Are there any other nominations? All right, I'll do a roll call vote in favor of Ted. Yes. Carrie. Yes. Matt? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Yes. Tara and Tara? Yes. And I'm a yes. <clears throat> Next will be open nomination for, I apologize, I forgot my glasses, um, the secretary of the uh, school committee. I nominate Ted Novio for secretary. Motion made by Tara. Second. Second. Second oh. by Tara and Kerry. Any um, any other nominations? We'll close the nominations. All the, um, so we'll do a roll call uh, to vote for secretary. Uh, Ted. Yes. Carrie. Yes. Matt. Yes. Chuck. Yes. Tara. Yes. And Tara. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Okay. Jason, help me out. What's the is that the end of that Secretary, question of it? Uh, then we go to the uh, treasurer. Uh, do we do the secretary? Yes. I believe that's what I just did. Yes. Yep. And oh, then I we go to, Yeah, time. then we go to the treasurer. All right, I'll open up nominations for the uh, <clears throat> for the treasurer of the district office for 24-25. Carrie Gaudet for district treasurer. Second. A motion made by Tara. Seconded by Tara. Any other nominations? Uh, I'll take a roll call vote. Ted? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Matt? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Tara? Yes. Tara? <laughs> yes. And Dan's a yes. And I would ask if we could hold on the last two, the district treasurer and the um, council, till the May meeting, if that's okay. Uh, the district assistant treasurer, my apologies. Okay. Uh, they both are still under contract until the end of June, so it's not a problem. Okay, so that wraps that up. Yeah. 
All right, now we'll get back to the agenda, uh, consent agenda A. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve the warrants. Motion made. Motion made by Tara. Second. Second, Second by Matt and Ted. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Uh, it's unanimous. And I'll accept the motion to accept the minutes from March 7th, 2024. So moved. Motion made by Matt, seconded by Ted. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. It's unanimous. Next is public forum. We do five minutes here? It's five or three? Three. Um, so anyone from the public would you like to address the committee? Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> we'll move on to <clears throat> school committee agenda. To approve the Charger for Life Authority Juro Scholarship. I make a motion to approve the Charger for Life Anthony Juro Scholarship. All right, there's a motion made by Tara. Second. Second by Chuck. Uh, discussion? Wanna yeah, yeah, the scholarship information is in your packet. Um, uh, Mr. Or the Giro family um, sent some information along, which I'm happy to read into um, the record, if that's okay. Um, the, the family of Anthony Giro, a beloved class of 2023 graduate who sadly passed away the day after graduation, has established a scholarship in Anthony's memory. They would like to select three class of 2024 graduates to receive a $1,000 scholarship at our annual awards night ceremony. They have named this scholarship uh, the Charger for Life Anthony Giroux Memorial Scholarship. The Giroux family will be issuing their award checks to the students, uh, but requests approval from the school committee to establish this scholarship here at BMR. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Superintendent. Are there any other comments? All right. Uh, One comment you. I'll make is that sure. um, on behalf, I, I, I just want to say that Anthony Giroux made a, a, a tremendous impact on so many, so many young men that were his teammates um, and friends over the years. And um, I, I, I see no better fitting scholarship than, than the scholarship. Thank you, Ted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, do you mind if, I'll, um, yeah. oh, sorry. I'll just, I'll take a motion to take the meeting out of order. There you go. <laughs> so we can move to the superintendent report for items A and B. Thank you. So much. Uh, motion made by Tara. Second. Second. Seconded by Chuck. So we're gonna move forward to the report of the superintendent, acceptance of elementary report card changes. Perfect. Mr. Thank you. Superintendent. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'd like to uh, ask to come to the front uh, this evening our, our friends, our colleagues who have worked tirelessly on two pretty significant projects for our school district this year. Um, and we'll do them in, in pieces. Uh, the first, uh, we'll hear from our elementary report card team. Uh, just kind of a subsection, I think, of the group that actually did all, the, all of the work. But we're very grateful that you're both here. Uh, all of you are here this evening, so thank you. And then after that, we'll hear from our science curriculum committee, uh, some uh, team members that will go over uh, some changes with that. Uh, but with that, I will turn over the, and Mrs. Schaefer, do you want the, the clicker so you can oh, sure. move just, along your I'm slides? Just my computer, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess Not gonna work. Need to see too. <laughs> okay. So it's a, a two part presentation starting with report card changes for next school year. So take it away. So um, our purpose in working through this, we revised our report cards, not totally changed, it's just really more of a revision, is to make sure that we're really representing all of our students, um, and we know all means all, and also working, having a positive and collaborative relationship with teachers and parents. So I'm moving the one on my computer and not this one. <laughs> Ooh, too far, I think. Nope. 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 Yep. All right, so we, have, we had five goals on the committee. The first was to have clarity and transparency so that the students, the parents, and the staff 
were clear on the learning standards, the expectations, and it was um, easy for the parents to understand and know what we were actually teaching them. The second goal was a focused assessment so that we can highlight the strengths and the weaknesses um, of the standards. Then goal three was targeted feedback. So the report card will give students the feedback on their performance in relation to all the standards that they're learning and also help the parents in how they can improve on what they're doing with their kids at home and what's needed and how to achieve that. Goal number four is we wanted to make sure it was aligned with our curriculum and what we use to teach the curriculum. And goal five was consistency. So we tried to make sure we looked at this vertically so that a lot of the language and the way the grading goes and how it's um, presented to the parents kind of matches up vertically. So it was easy to move from grade to grade when they got the reports. The area with that was the, um, perform the performance standards or the learning mm -hmm. behaviors um, to make sure that we had some consistency so it wasn't like one thing here and then like 50 over here. So, and make sure that they all kind of fed into each other for the natural progression of student development. And we completed all of this work, obviously, following this timeline. We met pretty consistently beginning late fall of last year. And there, all of our grade levels were represented at our meetings. And we had really productive conversations and small group out, um, outbreaks at those meetings. But then all of us in attendance on the committee also went back to our PLCs and got the input of all of our grade level counterparts, our colleagues, so that we really were representative of the whole grade. Um, and when we would go back to the next meeting, we'd be able to say, okay, all of grade two thinks this, all of grade three thinks this, versus just making those decisions unilaterally as a committee. Um, now that that work is done, obviously we're here tonight to share that with you. And then our um, plan is to have this new report card ready to use next school year. And I also went to, obviously, my own school council, but I also went to the um, complex school council and presented the, the revisions and what we kind mm -hmm. of were planning on to the parents as well. Mm -hmm. school council. And we do plan to have like, mm -hmm. like um, an FAQ available for, for families. Um, and I know a lot of us anyway at our parent-teacher conferences because those occur before report cards are generally given out at the elementary level. We usually share with the families that report card and sort of walk them through what they can expect when they receive it, you know, a month, a month later. So we will be doing things like that. Um, some of the major revisions that we made um, to this new report card is obviously we updated standards it's been a while since we had created this initial standards based report card um, some of those standards had changed and again we were looking for more consistency like we saw in the third grade one there were certain domains that were completely missing um, from the current report card so we wanted to make sure that all of those domains were um, given given equal status we did revise our performance standards um, the students are now scored on a four to one um, scale. They are still going to be scored on a four to one, but we did change the language a little bit. We wanted to make sure that it now said in um, at this time. So the parents understood like that this too wasn't for always, but just like right at that point in time. We changed learner behaviors from numbers to letters. Um, our current report card has them on a three, two, one, which does get a little confusing for our families because our our performance standards are four, three, two, one. Um, most given are the three, two, one, so it's, it was kind of hard for them to know because the two threes mean different things. So to just kind of like, well, a three in respectful isn't the same as you know a three here in being able to multiply up to 10 times 10. Um, so now those will be letters. Um, C, it'll be a C, O, S, and an N, meaning consistently met this performance criteria, often meets, sometimes meet, and um, needs improvement. So it's not not meeting, but it, it needs improvement <clears throat> meeting that um, learner behavior. We also wanted to make sure that 
we had quite a bit of discussion about this that our five pillars of the portrait of a graduate were all included in the learner behaviors um, or, or at least somewhere on the report card like communication might be represented through oral presentation in the English language arts, but it's there now. Like it wasn't necessarily there, but there are things now that definitely are connected to citizenship, to character, to collaboration, to communication, and to critical thinking across the board. Mm -hmm. So that was really important um, to us. And then um, STEM is going to be its own grade because right now there are some report cards where it is graded and others where it is not, um, mm -hmm. but I know. So in our building, it actually, the STEM teacher works with the classroom teachers to like average out the grades between STEM and science in the classroom. And then I know there's another, is a technology and a STEM grade right. on the report card, but they both say technology. Right, so like grade three, it. they get a technology and a technology. Mm -hmm and one is under attendance and one is with specials and none of us know which one is which because they both say exactly the same thing. So I don't know that parents know which one is which because we can't figure out which one is which. So now it will actually say STEM and it, it will be fixed. And um, actually, one of the, I think grade five did, was grade five that didn't have any learner behavior. Grade five had no zero learner, learner behavior, like zero. In the report card, and now they do have some. So, right. and that, that's where a lot, like Mrs. Dubois said, that's where a lot of our um, five C's came in. Mm -hmm. The portrait of a graduate work came right. out the way. Right. Kindergarten the had the most. Yes. Like kindergarten had like a whole they, column, yeah. which right. I, again is probably to be expected, but certainly by fifth grade, they still need to be demonstrating learner behaviors. Right. And the ladies that were part of our committee as we're saying, well, we like this one or we want, and they're like, what are you even talking about? Like, we don't even have those on our report card. So now they're all going to have something and they will all be tied back to the portrait of a graduate. And that's really about okay. it. We're just working on the final stages right now with tech um, in Aspen and getting all that work done. And Mrs. Colanino and I um, have met, had uh, several meetings with them and we come up, we tell them what, then they bring it back and check. And then they, so it's been kind of like a touch and go. Um, so we're kind of in those final stages of that. I'm ready to get it going. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Good. A lot of work. Yeah, Thank yes. work. We have, we have actually a huge team. We have at least one from every grade. Some grades we have two and three. So we have a really quite a large team. And we're excited that it's going to be yes. more consistent yeah. across the Yeah, that's great. That uh, Christina, I'm just, and to all, just curious the parent feedback when you met with the families. Did, did, did the changes make sense to them in yes, terms of they what? all made sense. Yes. Um, I, think, I think the thing that's going to be nice for families is the two different um, grading keys mm -hmm. for the learner behaviors and then the numbers because now all you see is like one, two, three, fours and you know making that understandable like what these mean mm -hmm. and helping and we're going to make sure the other piece then that the actual five C's is actually going to be on the report card mm -hmm. somewhere. We're just figuring out where with when we finalize it with Tech and Aspen mm -hmm. but the five C banner will I'll be on the report card as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Rumka, do you and uh, our members of our science committee want to join us? <clears throat> this also has been a significant amount of work. As the school committee knows, we're on our second iteration of uh, revisions for curriculum. <coughs> so uh, this is actually exciting. We're, we're back at science. We've spent the year working on this. Um, and so we're going to hear a bit about the changes this evening. So thanks for being here. Thank you. So Mary Conlino actually has been leading the work, so I can't take any credit. She just <laughs> asked me to come here for more support. So I'm here for them. So I'm going to hand it over to you guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, okay. Much like the report card committee, we began our work back in the late fall, early winter stages. And we began by meeting as a team and collaborating and evaluating where we currently stood with our science curriculums and creating a vision from there of what we wanted to see moving forward. So to help generate this vision, we met not only as a committee, but we also reported back to our PLCs, got feedback from them. We included student input because they're the ones experiencing this curriculum. So their feedback is just as important. And then we looked to DESE recommendations, ed reports, curate reports, just to see what is going on in the education world and trying to narrow it down from there. Based on that feedback, we then met with different curriculum programs and figured out which ones most aligned with our vision. And then some teachers trialed some of those programs moving forward. And then from there, we took that feedback and 
came to our conclusions. And the decisions that we came to are that we will be keep maintaining what we're currently using at the elementary level, which is STEM scopes. We'll be keeping that through the lower elementary, K through third, as well as fourth and fifth, which will be moving here to the middle school. In the middle school levels, sixth, seventh, and eighth, we'll be using McGraw-Hill. We will also be using that for the high school. McGraw-Hill environmental science for grade nine, biology for grade 10, and chemistry for grade 11. There was a lot of different factors that went into making these decisions, but I think the main factor was accessibility for teachers, students, as well as alignment with the Massachusetts standards. Massachusetts makes it a little difficult because there's national science standards and Massachusetts has their own different standards. So many of the curriculums follow the national standards, not Massachusetts standards. So it was a little difficult, but we narrowed it down and we have something that aligns with what we need. And to build on that, McGraw-Hill for the middle school and the high school has really high standards for the students, so it's helped going to help continue to push them to excel. And then in regards to why we chose to keep STEM scopes at the elementary level, based on our current situations, it's the most practical, it's user friendly, and with the right use, it's the most well-rounded for the elementary teachers and won't require as much supplementation, which will alleviate a lot of the burden that's been placed on elementary school teachers. <clears throat> And going forward, our plans are throughout the summer to gather materials, organize materials, get everything situated, and begin professional development opportunities for especially the middle and high school teachers that will be learning a completely new curriculum, but as well as professional development opportunities for us at the elementary level that are sticking with our curriculum, but maybe we can get a better grasp on it so we can support our students better. Another thing to add on to the STEM scopes part, um, it's also in the curate or in the queue to be approved by curate, which means that it will be closer to being one of those green programs that's sought out by more districts. I know this was a really big decision. I meet with Mary every week, uh, yeah. actually a couple times, and um, <laughs> every week we would sit down and she would say, "Okay, we've got a plan. This is what we're going to do." We go through the plan, we come back the next week, she's like, all right, remember that plan from, okay, scrap that plan. We have a different plan, this yep. is what we saw, this is the latest research. I'm like, all right, so we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, the next week she's like, all right, so we're gonna quarter turn that a little bit from last <laughs> week. So I, I know that all of you kept going back to the research. She kept going back to, you know, the curate, which are the Department of Education reports that essentially evaluate the curriculum against our standards, our state standards, because we are different. We're Massachusetts, we don't just follow the national curriculum. Uh, standards that have been set out for a lot of different content areas, um, but it makes the work for all of you really tricky. If it, if it was just following the national framework, it would be actually easy to pick one. But you really do have to get into the weeds of looking at the particular standards and which programs cover which ones. Uh, it's a, a fairly impossible task because not <laughs> every program is going to cover everything. So to your point about needing to supplement less, um, we won't find a perfect program in Massachusetts for any content. Yep because we have our own very unique set of frameworks for each content area. So my hat's off to you. I know that was a ton of work that you guys had to keep kind of going back to and finding the, you know, the right information to make the right choice. And if I may add something to it, um, we actually work on a master schedule for elementary and student will not be pulled from uh, science or social study anymore. Uh, we were very, being creative with the RTI block so um, they won't lose science or social studies block anymore. Um, so we need two yes. separate motions? Yep. That's all right. Any, any questions or comments from the school committee members? I will just say this is my third year, and with the Blueprint, Blueprint 2.0, you can continuously see the collaboration and gelling and you just explained very well, make recommendations for instructional materials to keep, modify, or adopt. And it seems like you had to do that through the back and forth through the whole process. So I appreciate all the hard work and both the report card changes and the science curriculum. So at this time, I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the elementary report card changes. So moved. Motion made by Tara. Second. 
Seconded by Tara. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You still got Carrie? Carrie left. Okay. Yeah. Uh, unanimous. Uh, and now I'll take a motion to um, accept the science curriculum as presented for the school year of 24 25. So moved. Motion made by Tara. Second. Seconded by Chuck. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great work. Nice work. All right. We want to go back to the school committee agenda. Is it? Or do we? I think so. Do we have anybody else in the audience? No, that was it. Okay. All right. So we'll go back to school committee agenda item B uh, to amend the 23-24 school calendar. New end date June 18th, 2024. Mr. Superintendent. Yes, uh, we had two snow days this year, uh, so that pushed us out into the next week. Uh, so our last week of school would uh, be a Monday and a half day Tuesday. Um, and so we are looking for approval to amend the calendar reflecting the two snow days that we use. And that will end the year on? Um, Tuesday, June 18th. I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. Yes. Um, Right here, this little slash gotcha. mark here. Yep. Oh, there it is. Yep. <laughs> it's hard to see. Last. <laughs> Next one. Okay, so I'll take a motion to um, amend the school uh, committee calendar for an end date of June eighteenth, twenty twenty-four. Motion made by Tara. Second. Second. Seconded by Matt and Chuck. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, next is the MSBA P, uh, Update Feasibility Study Agreement. Mr. Superintendent. Um, yes, can we do the, is it right to do the school committee calendar? I, is that all right on first? <laughs> I apologize, I right. checked that off. We'll do the school committee calendar next. Mr. Superintendent. Sure. Um, so in your packet, you have the draft calendar for school year 24-25. Um, we tried to make a couple of adjustments. Um, so you'll notice that we will have uh, one meeting in August. Uh, that would be August um, 19th. Um, oh, you know, my apologies. Let's jump back to July. Is that right? Or did we miss July on this one? I think we missed the July meeting on this one. Um, I'll get back to you on July. My apologies. Um, <laughs> but we can start with the August um, we will have one meeting in August, uh, which will be August 19th, uh, one meeting in September, September 12th, one meeting in October, October 10th. Um, the November meeting will be November 7th. Uh, December 12th, um, I know some of us may shudder at this. That starts our budget <laughs> <laughs> process. Um, that, but we'll have one meeting in uh, December on the 12th. And then uh, January, we planned one meeting because we'll schedule the workshops through January and February for our budget at the January 9th meeting, 2025. One meeting for February on February 6th. And then for March, April, and May, we added a second meeting uh, so we don't end up with agendas like tonight's um, where there's just a, just a huge amount of uh, material for us to work through. Um, so you'll see two meetings in March, the 6th and the 20th. Two meetings in April, the 10th and the 24th, and then two meetings in May. Um, so we made the changes this year to add those second meetings in March, April, and May. And this is subject to change due to, but this is pretty much our groundwork. Yeah. Um, and so does anybody have any questions on the proposed calendar? I'll take a uh, motion to um, accept the 24-25 school committee calendar. Motion made by Tara. Second. Second by Tara. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, the MSBA update to the feasibility study agreement. Perfect. Um, in your packet this evening, uh, you have a few different um, pieces of information regarding the Massachusetts School Building Authority 
uh, feasibility study project that we are about to enter into. Um, so I'll just take a quick minute and kind of walk through those. And Tara, jump in on anything as the chair sure. of the uh, school building committee if I'm missing something. Um, but the first item in your packet is titled the Massachusetts School Building Authority Feasibility Study Agreement. Um, this is a very important document that outlines uh, all of the regulations and the legalese around the feasibility study itself for our project. Um, and I, I do want to bring your attention um, to, let me just jump to the page six. If you look at page six, um, section B, and you'll see there are some, there should be some yellow highlights there on some numbers. Um, I bring this uh, paragraph to your attention because uh, this highlights um, the amount of the estimated feasibility study <coughs> cost, which was about a million, um, and MSBA's reimbursement rate should we end up moving forward with the actual project. So if the project actually gets folded into, um, you know, uh, the cost of the feasibility study actually gets folded into the project if the project is approved by um, by our residents. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you because it actually shows that our reimbursement rate is 59.21%. Um, and as such, they would reimburse us for about $592,000 of the million dollar feasibility study, uh, which is very significant. Um, again, should that project come to fruition and, and be approved. So I wanted to bring that to everybody's um, attention. Um, with that, uh, Joe and I had an opportunity to meet with Lynn Welch last week, uh, which is very helpful. We talked about all of our capital debt and some of the other uh, upcoming projects and spoke specifically about um, the feasibility study. Um, and we had a good discussion um, around you know, needing to go out to borrow potentially for the feasibility study. Um, one of, because of the steps the school committee took and because our communities approved this, uh, we have 500000 in capital stabilization that we, we're going to use first on this, uh, which is great, uh, so that if our feasibility study actually comes in under that, the amount that uh, we may need to borrow <coughs> could be much less than what we're assuming it may end up being, so based on the overall cost of the project. And plus, if the project is funded, we'll be in re reimbursed for almost 60% of that. So um, I know when when... Uh, the general public hears, you know, a million, a, a million dollar price tag on something, um, you know, kind of our, our, our ears perk up and it should. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really not going to shake out to that, uh, to that total for the reasons I just mentioned, the reimbursement and the capital stabilization fund. Um, and so um, that's some really good news for our project. But just to remind um, our friends and families that are tuning in at home. Um, so there's just a little bit about that. Um, the next piece that I wanted to mention, um, on April 24th, we will have the Massachusetts School Building Authority Board of Directors meeting. It's a virtual meeting. And at that meeting, they will uh, vote to accept um, us into feasibility, which is great. Uh, that meeting's at 10 o'clock uh, on the 24th. Uh, at 1 o'clock on the 24th, we have a meeting with MSBA to train us around uh, the selection of an owner's project manager. So, I mean, we're, we're moving. Once we're accepted in, we're off to the races and we're looking for an OPM, um, which is great. This is one of those that we had to, like, hurry up and wait, and the wait's just about over, uh, which, is, which, is, which is fantastic for the project. Um, so that we have to look forward to. Um, the second item in your packet uh, is listed as Exhibit A, and that is the feasibility study budget. Um, you will see that there are some um, estimates for an owner's project manager, a designer, and environmental and site testing. Um, in full transparency, I had to design this budget, um, and there is no support from MSBA to do this. They basically give you other projects and you need to comb through all of their costs and figure it out. Um, I was informed that if I did this wrong, I would be told. Um, I, no one has said anything from MSBA other than we got this from them in their packet, so it must have been approved, uh, which is good. Um, 
And so um, I say that uh, only to state that some of these numbers could change. So an OPM or owner's project manager may be a little less or it might be a little bit more than $250,000. The designer will probably come in less than $650,000. Um, but that was about what I was seeing for projects our size. Um, and then the site testing, I don't know that we're going to need the full 100000 for that. Uh, but again, for projects, our scope and size, that was about kind of the, the, the middle of the road. So. Just to say that these numbers, if we're sitting here a year from now and they look a little bit different, uh, that is possible. Uh, but they can't exceed the, the total amount of the project. Uh, on the back side of that, Exhibit B, you will see um, a document titled Scope of the Feasibility Study. Um, and this is really important uh, because, and Tara, as the chair of the School Building Committee, I know that you know this very well, this is where our enrollment um, certification numbers came in and there was a lot of back and forth with uh, MSBA around our enrollment. Um, this is a super important number because MSBA will only build 175 square feet per student. So this student number is hugely important that we get this right. Uh, and we went back and forth with MSBA um, probably three or four times till we got them to land on, on a larger number. Uh, so this is very good news for us as far as the enrollment is concerned. Uh, but these are the numbers that we are certified to build that. Now, if we had a significant change in one of our towns, a you know huge development goes in and is built that we were unaware of um, after talking to you know both town halls through this whole uh, process, which which we did do. Um, but you know if there was a shift in that and we had you know a large number of families move in. Uh, there is a process for us to amend th this number if something that significant would happen. Uh, but right now, like these are the numbers that we are going to be uh, conducting the feasibility study around. And in that study, uh, the reason that this configuration is broken out this way is because this is what we have asked uh, MSBA to fund a feasibility study to actually review for us. So that... Uh, again, to our families and friends at home, that includes a 6 through 12 model, a 7 through 12 model, an 8 through 12, or just a traditional high school, 9 through 12. So helping us uh, spec out the costs for all of those different designs. And then lastly, the final piece of information in your uh, packet this evening in, is a certification of legal counsel for the district. Uh, this is, there's nothing that the district needs to do with this. Um, our attorney, <coughs> Kelly Gonzalez, will actually uh, tomorrow uh, go through and put this information on her uh, letterhead and will execute the signing of this um, document as well. So once all of this is approved, everything will be scanned and emailed to Jennifer Flynn, our senior um, uh, representative from MSBA tomorrow and then we'll hard copy all of the signed uh, documents into them as well. That's really important because we needed to get everything in on time for MSBA to get it into um, their packet for their board meeting on April 24th. So let me pause here. I'm not sure if there are any questions on any of the documents. I do. <clears throat> Just getting back to the reimbursement. If the feasibility study gets rolled into the the loan, best case scenario, that it's all approved. Um, so the the fifty nine point two one reimbursement. That's a great. That's a great. It's more better than we receive. I think fifty eight. It's a bit higher. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, the stabilization fund is, is built off of the regional agreement percentages, um, and if it was rolled in, it would be rolled in as the regional agreement percentages. Um, to the um, to the bigger project, would we exhaust the stabilization fund? Because then we you, say it's the million dollars. Half of that is the stabilization fund. The other right. half is the assessments to the towns. Right. We'd have to go to borrow. Right. Yep. So we would exhaust this portion yeah, first. Correct. So the recommendation from Lynn Welch was to exhaust the state the capital stabilization fund first. 
then anything be above and beyond, we could we would go out to borrow for for that amount and then assess the accounts appropriately. We can only do a short term um, note for this particular type of project. I believe it was a five year uh, term, um, and so um, if it's not approved, the town would have that five year window to pay back whatever the difference is. Um, less our 500 you know of the 500,000 that's in the that's in the stabilization and the you know the reimbursement I, I know the question will come up because some yeah. people watching will think well where is you know where is the town's portions uh, but we would exhaust the stabilization account first and then if everything worked out well then this would be assessed in the bigger picture so it would it would remain fair for both communities throughout the whole process. 100%, and if I could, so if we say the, say the overall feasibility study costs 750,000, we would go out to borrow for 250,000, and then we would assess the 75, 25% accordingly to the That's towns right. to, to, um, to pay off the, the amount that we borrowed for the feasibility. That's all I have on it, yeah. Mr. Chair. I mean, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, anybody else have anything on this? Uh, you want to continue, or can we call for Make a the motion? Yeah, is it okay to do the motion? Yeah, on this? yeah. sure. So we'll need a mo. I would imagine the motion is to accept the agreement. Yes, to enter into the agreement. Oh, I can read yeah. the motions that are prepared for us. I was not used to that. <laughs> All right. So I'll have to take a motion. I move to enter the feasibility study agreement with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. A motion made by Tara. Second. Seconded by Ted. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. I move to authorize the superintendent to sign the feasibility study agreement on behalf of the regional school district. Motion made by Tara. Second. Second by Tara. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You oppose the ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. We'll get that done tomorrow. Next is the FY25 health insurance update. Um, yes, just a couple of quick uh, notes for the school committee, as ultimately it's the school committee's decision what direction we move in with our health insurance. Um, we have had a we've had uh, two insurance advisory council meetings to date, um, and just as a reminder, those meetings are comprised of um, a member or two from the school committee, um, myself, Joe. Um, we have Representative Sermaya uh, attend our last meeting, um, and they also include members from our retiree uh, population and uh, leaders from uh, bargaining units. And so we bring everybody to the table to go through um, all of the projections as far as the health insurance increases across our plans. Um, and as we've discussed through various budget workshops, our health insurance increase uh, for fiscal 25 is 7.59%. Um, and that's with our current plans um, that are contractual. The plans are listed in our contract as far as deductibles and the percent that the district pays for the premium compared to what the employee pays for the premium. Uh, but with all of that, you know, as you can imagine, that's a very high increase. So we did schedule a couple of insurance advisory council meetings um, and invited Maya in. Um, <coughs> The uh, Vice President, uh, Chris Bailey, um, and Tara Farland, I think I'm saying her last name correctly, uh, met with us just again this week to go through you know, some different options. Um, so they are going to look at a two-year option, um, which we're certainly not committing to, um, you know, to that, but to try to help us bring the percent uh, increase down. So just wanted to give an update on that. It is in the budget at 7.5%, so we have the money budgeted. Um, but um, I know insurance is, uh, is a costly item. It's over $3 million of our budget. Wanted to make sure to update the school committee and just kind of where that stood and what, you know, what we've done to date. Um, and so I actually want to give a big shout out to Fred Hartnett. He's been, he really has been very helpful. Uh, he's at the table the past couple meetings. He spoke with uh, Jessica Sinclair, our HR specialist. He and I have spoke as well. Uh, wealth of knowledge, lots of good ideas. Um, so we appreciated his, um, his insight on things. So I'll have another update for the committee uh, very soon, but that's where things are currently. We're waiting for 
see what that two-year um, commitment would look like if we can get the increase down a bit. All right, any questions or comments on that? All right, we will move on to early retirement incentive unit A and C. So the past few years, uh, last year we did not do this, uh, but prior we did. Um, we took uh, the opportunity to offer an early retirement incentive to educators in our unit A um, uh, bargaining unit and um, support staff in our unit C um, bargaining unit. And so uh, in front of you this evening um, is essentially an overview of what the uh, early retirement incentive looks like um, and it's all broken down uh, for you for unit A and for unit C. Um, unit A is really straightforward uh, because everybody's on the same pay scale. That's a 184-day contract, the steps, the lanes, it's the, you know, uh, they're, they're, it's all kind of a level playing field. Um, for unit C, it's a little bit different. Um, and you will notice at the bottom of um, the, uh, the handout that there is a different amount uh, depending upon which unit C classification you're in. So again, for our families and friends listening at home, that's our custodians, our paraprofessionals, our admin assistants, cafeteria workers, etc. Um, and uh, as the committee knows, each of those classifications works a little bit different schedule. So some are 10 months, some are 12 months, some are six hours, some are seven and a half hours, some are six and a half hours. So it's all, uh, it's all a bit different. So um, these totals would be prorated based on the hours that the employee uh, worked. Um, we did do an analysis. Um, my sense is one of you might ask this, uh, so um, I'll share it now if that's all right. But um, we did do an analysis of every single employee in the school system who's eligible to retire. That means you've got 10 years vested in MTRS, so from the, from the unit A side. Um, by the way, I haven't met anyone yet who is retired after 10 years <laughs> because, you know, you certainly can't retire on that. Um, but, but be that as it may, we did check anyway and looked at every single employee in the school system who would be eligible underneath this. And there is uh, about a $500,000 liability there. The likelihood that even a small fraction of our educators would take that, I think, is slim. Um, because, um, you know, we're talking individuals that, you know, have been here 10 years, 15 years, 12 years. So they're eligible, but they wouldn't, you know, they're not ready to retire uh, at that point. But I did want to make sure to put that out there that we do have all of the calculations uh, for each specific employee and what their buyout uh, or payout would be underneath this um, in, in early retirement incentive. Has anyone declared that they're planning on retiring? Um, we had a couple of, uh, we had one unit A and we had a couple of units C already um, that, that declared their retirement. So those individuals, um, Monique essentially will crosswalk the incentive versus what they're already, they're not going to get that and this. Um, okay. So it's, in most cases, um, if they've already declared their retirement, again, most cases, their incentive is already larger than what's here oh. in most cases. So they're not going to get both. Okay. Any other questions? So, um, Mr. Superintendent, you need a couple of um, motions on these? Yes, to uh, approve the uh, incentive so we can get it out to our employees. So, if someone would like to make a motion. I make a motion to approve uh, to approve the early retirement incentive for Unit A. Do you want me to do them together and Unit C? No, that's fine. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. Do, do we need, need to read in all the details? You want all the thorough details <coughs> as, as presented as by the presented. superintendent? As presented by the superintendent. So there's a motion by Tara? Seconded. Seconded by Ted. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Next on the agenda is a vote to authorize the superintendent to negotiate MOA regarding grade reconfiguration. Yeah, um, this is just, um, as you know, in the contract, we have things like start and end times for our educators. Um, because of the reconfiguration, some of those are going to change. Um, so things like 
um, you know, running what we're looking at now is a middle tier of buses. So having the high school on their existing tier, but it, it may be five or 10 minutes earlier, um, then adding a new tier for grades four through seven, and then having um, the elementary uh, PK through three running on the uh, last tier, which again, right now, they're starting around 8.45 to about 3.05, but that might change 10 minutes the other way. So those small things, well, you know, they certainly don't seem like a significant issue, but we do have to negotiate all of those uh, with you today. Um, another, another topic to discuss are things like team leaders. Um, when you bring together grades four through seven, grades six through eight have team leaders, but K through five do not. So then you have a building that has half team leaders and half not team leaders. And so we just got to fix some of those things. Um, and I do not want to enter into those discussions without your approval. Housekeeping matters. Yeah, ex exactly. That's a great way to say that. Um, any comments or questions on that? I'll take a motion to authorize the superintendent to negotiate an MOA regarding grade reconfiguration. So moved. Motion by Tara. Second. Second by Chuck. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> And that time of year is the superintendent's mid-cycle evaluation. Um, so I will try to move through this quickly. Um, largely because most of the information in here, you have all seen this already, uh, which frankly is the way that this should be um, because it's the work that we're doing. Uh, but as you know, um, <coughs> our goals for this year are anchored in our blueprint, um, which was mentioned earlier, which I'm great, it was great to hear, um, because truly everything that we do does come back uh, to this. Even thinking of a, a plan we had to submit recently to the federal government for our Title I audit, and Joe very quickly just printed off mm -hmm. a blueprint document we had and just submitted it, and it was fine, uh, because that's the work we're doing. Nobody has to create things and make up things. It's just it's how we work. Um, and so our, t our goals are all directly connected back to this. And just as a refresh, how the goals were determined was a variety of uh, pieces of um, information. Um, of course, the feedback from our school committee from last year on our goals and my goals. Um, our uh, blueprint, as I mentioned, end of year data. Um, the um, surveys from our school community. And again, for our families and friends listening at home, I really want to underscore that we take your feedback very seriously. Um, and so you'll see some focus areas, uh, as the committee well knows, because uh, we've been talking about them all year, but focus on that feedback from our, from our uh, school community, meaning specifically our parents, our educators, and our students. Um, each year we identify, the uh, school committee identifies different areas where they want me to focus. These are the ones that we selected for this year. Um, and I won't read these all you know, through, um, but the superintendent evaluation covered something like 32 different areas, uh, which, is a, which is a vast uh, range of uh, topics and potential focus uh, for the year. But we landed on these, um, these areas underneath each one of the standards. So underneath instructional leadership, management and operations of the school system, family and community engagement, and professional culture. What I really do love about this evaluation system is the principles, rubrics, and expectations are very similar to these, and so are the teachers. So there's a really nice through line all the way through the system, which frankly there should be. Uh, but it makes coherence and consistency across the work really, um, really tight. Um, our first goal um, is anchored around our student learning. Um, kind of the headline to this piece is really focused around student achievement, looking for a 5% increase uh, in our SGP or student growth percentile uh, from last uh, school year's performance to this school year, and seeing an increase in our um, student uh, proficiency rates. Um, Underneath that, though, there are uh, two very specific kind of buckets of work to help achieve that goal. One is in curriculum, uh, and one is in instruction, right? So curriculum is the what. That's all the stuff that we teach. The instruction is the how, right? It's the delivery of that. Uh, and so we've outlined very specific pieces of work, some of which we heard tonight, 
around science uh, and the selection of a new science curriculum. Um, and so um, you'll see after the next slide, uh, which is really anchored in very specific pieces of work, right? So if you think about the student learning goal uh, that we just reviewed, it's very kind of high level macro. We're looking at curriculum, we're looking at broad instructional practices, data cycles, those types of pieces of work. Um, but on the second piece or this extension of our student learning goal, we're talking about very specific things. Uh, and this really came from that feedback that I mentioned a couple of slides back uh, about helping us bring our focus. And so specifically, this is bringing extra attention to our middle school, bringing extra attention to our literacy work, particularly with our male students, um, expanding uh, some of the leadership development of our male students uh, and really deepening some of that work, um, and then exposure to additional career pathways and opportunities. And so I just want to call those pieces out because uh, this is like, to me, this is where the rubber meets the road. Like, yes, you can pick a new curriculum and, you know, we can put in data cycles and professional learning communities and all these like, you know, a bunch of educational jargon things. But like, this is the stuff that we're doing with kids um, that I think is really important to mention. Um, so... I'm not going to walk through any of this evidence uh, as far as clicking on any of these hyperlinks. This was emailed to the school committee today um, so that you will have this for your review. Um, but each one of those sample pieces of evidence is a hyperlink uh, to a document. Um, next to those pieces of evidence are the standards that they're connected to. So the standards that the school committee wanted me to focus on uh, and approved are all linked here. So you can see exactly where each one of these pieces is connected back to the evaluation standards. Uh, you'll notice that um, underneath um, the middle school uh, instructional leadership team focus, pardon some of the acronyms, I couldn't type out. I, we use way too many words in education and they're way too long and they took up way too much space. So I didn't have to use the acronyms. Um, but you'll notice that that first standard, which is uh, 1A, 1B, 1C, 4A, and 4D, um, those apply to all of the pieces of evidence underneath. I wasn't just going to sit and kind of keep rewriting the same things. Um, so those are applied to each one underneath. Um, a couple things just to bring to your attention, though, in, um, as far as this evidence is concerned. Like I said, we're not going to click on these and, and get into all of that. You can see that when you uh, peruse it later. Um, but you'll see that our first piece of evidence is focused on our middle school instructional leadership team. Um, and there is some sample evidence of, of the work that's been happening to really, uh, from the beginning of the year, as we know, we had to bring some additional focus to our middle school, so to help reset and deepen the work around uh, the teacher leadership piece at the middle school. Um, and, and there's some other evidence to go along with that as well. Um, the teaching, learning, and leading feedback um, is actually a piece of evidence. Um, Jill um, and I uh, give feedback quarterly to our building principals on their progress towards their goals, towards increasing teaching and learning outcomes in each one of our schools. Uh, so quarterly, we write, it's a couple of pages, uh, and we are in the schools every week. So it's, it's, it's actually, it's hard, they're hard to write because there's a lot we want to say, but we try to boil it down to like a page. Um, and so you'll see a sample of that. We redacted names and things, but, um, but just to give you a sense of the feedback that we're giving as we're meeting with our principals and trying to lift um, the instruction and the learning in each of the buildings. So um, I think that will, that will be a helpful piece for you all you know, to get a kind of sense of that. If you jump down to the student reading survey, um, you'll see feedback right from the students. Uh, so we did a survey with all the kids across the system, and then we did focus groups. Um, and we kind of organized the focus groups into those kids that said they love reading, those kids that were like, eh, it's okay, and those kids that were like, no thanks. Um, and we really wanted to get under the hood of all of that to figure out um, you know, where does that come from. Um, and one of the things we learned, to no surprise, I'm sure if anybody around the table, was that uh, genre was a really important piece, that you know, the kids will read more, um, if they have the right stuff in their hands. So enter into uh, the committee approving in the fall us to be able to purchase $5,000 worth of new reading materials for each library. We did it through a grant. Um, 
But we took a lot of time and a lot of effort and energy went into making sure that we got the right books in front of the kids. Um, we had a, we had many discussions, particularly with our as if we go back to a couple of slides ago, uh, with our young men, and most of the groups that um, had lower interest in reading, most of them were predominantly our young men. So trying to figure out like what will spark the interest in them, and a lot of it was genre, the adventures and mysteries, and um, there was actually some like our we learned a lot our historians they wanted more books about presidents and more things about our, our nation's history. And so our librarians worked really hard to come up with the right selections. Um, and with that, I want to give a huge shout out to Sarah Tasker uh, because she really helped me lead the charge with this whole thing. As a matter of fact, she and I were meeting just yesterday um, going through all of the collections. Uh, we've done this library. Yesterday we were doing the high school. And just, just being careful, like going through and looking at all of the selections and making sure that, you know, they're grade appropriate and topic appropriate. And, you know, we've all heard horror stories of a book popping up in a library and it's like, well, how'd that get there? So we're just being very thorough to make sure that, um, you know, the right books are in front of our kids. So we're excited about the work um, that's been done in that space. So uh, you'll see some photos and things as evidence throughout this too. Um, there's nothing better than seeing some of these things. And I can tell you when the books uh, came in, um, the librarians were going crazy. It was like librarians gone wild. And I was like the <laughs> photos of like boxes of books. And, like, <laughs> I that one. It really was kind of funny. I'm like, my email was blowing up with pictures of books and books and books. And uh, it was cool. It was really cool to, to see the energy and the excitement. Um, and Sarah was, a, uh, and all the librarians were tremendous. Uh, but Sarah really was helpful at, at being a ringleader at driving this project forward. Um, and then just the last thing I want to highlight on this was, is again, just the men's leadership group. Our kind of tagline is inspiring to help aspire. Um, and so trying to help give our boys a kind of, uh, how do I say, like a rebranded vision of what's possible for themselves. Um, and so we've done things again this year, like the Perot's Family Center in Worcester, uh, which was great. Uh, the projects, because now this is the second time we've been there, so the projects they had our kids doing, I mean, they were like ripping out carpets. They were painting stair. I mean, this was serious stuff. It wasn't just kind of cleaning and, you know, boxing things for them. And, you know, because the the uh, director um, is still there from our last visit, he knew the kids. He knew us. And he was really pumped to have us come back. So he gave the kids really complicated projects. I got put in hot chocolate duty just for <laughs> I had to go do a Duncan run and bring all the kids back hot chocolate. Um Nobody would let me paint or touch or rip up anything. Uh, but the kids had a great time doing it. Um, it was fun watching them kind of use the equipment and carpet cleaning and all kinds of things. Uh, but they felt great. They felt so empowered. Uh, we also <clears throat> took them to the Parkway Diner for breakfast. Because um, if you've ever been to the Parkway in Worcester, it's like the best diner place. So kids had a great time with that. Um, and, of course, we did our Blackstone Food Pantry. Um, we also did, um, we participated in a Blackstone Valley Chamber of Commerce event. It was kind of a manufacturing event at Polar Park, which was awesome. So the kids were doing a bunch of these kind of manufacturing and construction challenges, which was cool. Um, I had the pleasure of taking them on a tour to New England Tech uh, myself, which was great. Um, it was a little bit of a, a kind of a last minute thing that we were able to squeeze in. But they were able to, um, the school was able to host us. So we jumped on it and um, jumped, to, jumped in the van and took the kids down to show them New England Tech. Um, and we had a really awesome experience just this past Monday. Um, we wanted to get them into uh, a city. We wanted to kind of show them something very different. Now, some of the kids have been in Boston before, us, but some of them hadn't. Um, some of the kids, a couple of the kids have been on the commuter rail. Others hadn't. So we really wanted them to experience, like, how do you navigate a big public transit system? So we all met up at Foxborough and uh, jumped on the commuter rail. I took the commuter rail into Back Bay. Uh, we walked through um, kind of actually over near where the marathon, that was my own selfish thing, is going to finish. I wanted to show the boys where the marathon finishes. So we kind of walked over there, and then we walked through the Boston Gardens, through the um, Commons, and then Rep Soder and Senator Fatman hosted what I think is, I've been to the state house a million times. It was the most remarkable visit I've ever, I've ever had. Um, I mean, they really 
pulled out all the stops for our kids. Uh, they um, got us into the actual governor's office, like her literal office. She wasn't there. Um, we have a picture sitting on her couches in front of her fireplace. <laughs> like it was, the kids were like totally blown away. Um, we needed a special security kind of clearance and swipe badge to even get through there. And Rep Soder got us, got us through and got us in through uh, the governor's administrative assistant. I mean, it was amazing. The things that these kids saw, they, we have this beautiful picture of all of them out on uh, the balcony overlooking the Boston Common from the governor's office. Like, nobody gets to do that. Um, or a few, you know, very few get to do that. So um, they had a great experience there. We went into the Senate chambers. We went into the House chamber. Uh, chamber and then um, from there, uh, we taught them how to navigate the Green Line, we jumped on the E-Train and went over to uh, Wentworth Institute of Technology and we toured Wentworth, which was kind of funny because the kids were like, uh, this is kind of a bust after what we just saw. Maybe you should have done it the other way around. <laughs> um, but uh, it was a, an amazing experience. We finished up the tour, grabbed some lunch to go, and then walked through the Back Bay Corridor, which are like a whole series of gardens and things to get back to the train. And then we watched the eclipse from the parking lot of Foxborough. So it was really, it was probably one of the best days I've had ever here. I mean, truly, the amount of time um, uh, that we got to have with the kids and the activities we got to do and to see them, they were just, they were great. I mean, they were smiles and laughs and, you know, a lot of complaints at the end, like, oh, we're tired, you know, because they were walking around a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but it was a really awesome day. So we're looking forward to a couple more activities. We've got, um, um, Actually, Mr. Hebert's um, wife works at Waters and has got us in to uh, visit um, uh, the Waters uh, company. So that will be happening on May 2nd. We have a group of boys going off to that. They're going to get to you know, tour the facility and um, hear a little bit from the business side of things. We have some kids that are also interested in the business side of the house, so to speak, and how do you actually run a company? Like, what does that look like? How does this work? Um, and they're going to uh, host the boys for lunch as well. So lots, lots of really good stuff there. Um, when we get to our uh, next goal, which was around a deeper learning, and it was a focus um, around this kind of capacity building um, around what we were referring to at what we were referring to at the time as deeper learning. Um, and this goal was really interesting because it actually kind of morphed. Um, and I have to say that uh, the piece of evidence is which I think you all find very interesting. I just attached one piece. Um, this was a year-long course uh, that um, I had the pleasure of taking with Jill Fowles, Jenny Remka, Lynn Scott, and Linda Moreau. And I have to say, the much like my time with the kids, the best part about this course and this training was just being with our team. Uh, we had some incredible conversations about where the district is, where it needs to go. Um, and, you know, if you know Lynn Scott and Linda Moreau, they've been here a long time. Uh, Lynn was a student here and she went all the way through. So her insight was invaluable. Um, and so we just had the best time talking about some of our current challenges. Um, and honestly, we couldn't figure out where we wanted to land on a particular project. We had a coach that was assigned to us from this course um, to help us with a particular project. Um, and we, we, you know, we kind of went back and forth. We talked about the reconfiguration. We talked about supporting our ELL students. We talked about climate and culture and building trust. I mean, we ran the whole gamut. Um, and then what was interesting, you know, at the end of this, I kind of felt a little bit like a failure because we didn't pick this one thing in a huge action plan and have all these outcomes. You guys know clearly like how we work. Um, but they asked us to present. And we were one of, I don't know, maybe 12 districts, 13 districts that were in this. And they only asked a couple to present their projects, and we were one of them. Uh, and I think it's because that unintended outcome of like camaraderie, teamwork, vision is what happened for us. We all just totally synced up and got on the same page with the work we're trying to do across the district. Uh, so it was, it was really powerful. Jill Fallis ended up presenting, as you can imagine. She's so dynamic. Um, she did an incredible job. There were, you know, close to, I don't know, probably 70 educators in the room. And without hesitation, you know, she stood right up and presented, you know, all of the work that we did uh, and did a really great job. So I just, it's so great that BMR, keep, we keep getting our name out as a system, doing really good work. And that was another example of that. So you'll see all the details uh, of that. 
along these same lines is kind of better together goal. And it was, this goal was really anchored around strengthening our systems. Um, you will see a lot of different pieces of evidence here on how we've been doing that. Um, so you'll see a big focus on our year two and year three new teachers. Um, you'll see some work around optional professional development modules that um, we have in place. The changes we've made to our mentoring program, um, our principal professional learning community um, that um, we just finished our last formal session yesterday, and just to bring to everybody's attention again, that's our partnership with Hopedale and Bellingham. And so um, we meet every other month as a big professional learning community. Um, and the superintendents do all the planning um, as far as you know, the activities and the work. Each district has hosted, so we've had them in BMR. Uh, we've been to Hopedale a couple times, we've been to Bellingham. Um, and the focus is around really strengthening uh, leadership practices, leadership capacity, but it's been anchored in feedback. Like, so how do we give really meaningful feedback? How do we triangulate uh, observations and what we see in the classroom with student work, with our rubrics, which are the tools we have to use to give the feedback, and how do we kind of triangulate that data? So, you know, kind of the headline to that is, are we using our time wisely? Are we using it on the right stuff? Because as you can imagine, Principals have 9 million things a day that they could be doing, but like five of those 9 million things will actually make a difference for kids. So are we focusing on those five things? I'm picking that number, you know, but that are going to make a difference for kids. Um, and so we, we've spent a, uh, each of those sessions is three hours. We launched this work. Uh, we gave up one of our uh, retreat days um, to do a full day retreat with the principals from BMR, Hopedale, and Bellingham, um, and the leadership team members, Jill. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, uh, it's been great. It's been a great experience. So uh, we'll be continuing that. So you'll see some evidence of that in there as well. Um, so again, just a few, a few things to bring to your attention. Our wellness goal this year, um, you know, in the past, we focused it a lot around kind of equity and inclusivity, and we're not, not focusing on those things. Uh, but we took wellness to a literal health and wellness perspective uh, this year. And so you'll see for evidence, uh, we have, we, and we're, we are going to continue to do more of these uh, kind of trainings, but we are trying to bring information right to kids uh, and help them make healthy decisions for themselves. So you'll see, um, you know, things like healthy relationships training, which I got really good feedback from parents. I wasn't sure how that was going to land because the topic, you know, can, can sound... Um, a bit charging, um, but the DA's office did a fantastic job um, presenting to our students and really giving a good overview on how to develop and maintain healthy relationships. We actually split the kids up in groups. So the freshmen and sophomores had one training and the juniors and seniors, because they're dealing with different issues, you know, 14 to 18 is a huge grade span um, with a vast, you know, um, kind of variety of issues. So um, the trainings were a little bit different and tailored to the specific age groups. Um, I got very good feedback from families um, that attended. There weren't a ton, but there were some on the internet safety um, training. Some of our, actually some of our staff attended it too, just for their own understanding of, you know, kind of what's going on with our kids when they're jumping online. Um, and then, of course, um, vaping, which remains a huge challenge for us. Um, not unique to us, but across the district. So we're going to continue to bring this type of uh, training and service to our students um, in while Jill's not presenting this particular information, she does a ton of this work. So a big shout out to Jill and her team um, and has something very big planned for the fall. I'm sure we'll talk about later uh, in, in the school year uh, that's really focused around, you know, uh, anti-bullying and helping kids build healthy relationships. So. Um, and lastly, as far as our formal goals, of goals, of course, our facilities goal. Um, there's nothing linked here because we literally just did these things. <laughs> so some of them tonight. So um, our feasibility study, um, our budget uh, and capital being certified for the year, and then of course the reconfiguration. Um, it's funny because on this slide it looks like three little tiny things, but mm -hmm. as all of you know, because you have been directly involved, this was months and months and months of work. Um, and again, the standards that uh, equate to those three pieces of evidence. Um, I'm not going to 
spend much time at all on this uh, because as you know, we are in the process now of changing our assessment system and it's just, you all know that STAR has just not been a good, has not been a good indicator of where we end up landing. So I don't wanna belabor any of this, um, um, but to give everybody a sense, again, um, the, these are our ELA results from beginning to middle of year and what the difference is as far as achievement. These are our meeting and exceeding numbers. Um, just so everybody uh, is aware, the MOI test was given January and February. So I know we're early April, so this is old data by now anyhow, um, which is another reason we're not gonna spend a ton of time on it. But these are the changes in ELA. Uh, the next is the changes in mathematics. Um, and there is a little bit of a story, again, to be told, but, I, but this just hasn't been helpful in terms of forecasting. I can tell you our teachers and principals are using this data, but they're just looking at the standards. They're really getting into what are the skills and standards that the kids are showing they know and don't know, and they're, they're predominantly focusing on that information. Um, because as we've seen in the past, this data is like hit or miss in terms of where it actually projects our students to be at the end. Um, but there, you know, the, there are some data points when we look at the students um, not meeting expectations. We, we can see some, some, some you know, significant reductions. How that all bears out you know, at the end of the year, we're not entirely sure yet. Um, likewise with our growth, again, that target's usually between 40 and 60%. We wanna land at 50% at growth. So again, I say take this all you know, cautiously but from fall to winter, this is where our student growth percentiles uh, are landing. And again, we will look at this and I'm like, oh, that's really great. In most cases, we're at 50 or higher. Yep, but let's be cautious about that, right? Because we, you know, we, we know that this doesn't equate uh, the way that we are hoping that it would. Similarly with math, we can see the results here. Again, if you look at this, all but one grade level has met or exceeded the growth target, um, which you know we want to celebrate, but we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that. <laughs> and Jill, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, special ed? Sure. I know last year we we always have so our special education numbers. They're always varying of students coming in and out. So we just gave you an overview of the amount of students in the grade level at the time of the testing. And just so you know, there may be a few of those students who actually um, aren't able to access the star right now. Um, but just to give you a sense of students coming in and going out, new students could be because they recently qualified or they could have been new to the district. You can see we had that little pot of kids coming in on grade three. We had four new, um, more students coming in you know, than exiting. But with the number of students in each grade level, a few students can make a difference to our overall, but we keep a, an eye on those individual students. Just like we do in regular education, our special education teachers take a really deep dive into each individual student. So just to give you a sense where they are there. And then you can see our scores here. One thing I did want to point out that there was an error if you just wanted to fix that. If you look at grade three, those um, on the BOY and the MOY are actually need to be updated. The BOY was actually 53%. Those were number of students that were put in wrong. So it should be 53 for um, the BOY for not meeting and 43 for the um, MOY. Um, just to bring your attention to some things, you can see some grade levels, for example, in fourth grade, we saw some nice, significant growth across the board. And just to give you a sense of our second graders, you may say they did show some, you know, we had some meeting but what um, and exceeding, but what doesn't show here is we have some kids in the second grade who can't yet access the STAR assessment. So in the first round in the BOI, we probably had, I think it was seven students who were actually able to access it. And then that number increased. Um, for the MOI, we had, I think it was almost 10 students out of our 17, and one of them was is not able to access standardized testing. So they did still see some growth, but just to give you a sense, not all of our second graders are quite yet ready to do that. Um, so these are our numbers there for the, um, for the uh, ELA, and we know we have some grade levels we need to focus on. Um, and the same thing with the math, if you see that, same thing, all of our second graders were able to access. You can see we have some nice growth from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. If you look some of those uh, to the middle of the year for those percentages for math. Um, and again, fourth grade seemed to, to knock it out of the park with some of those growth scores um, there in fourth grade. And we saw some, some nice growth too when it comes down from going from our not meeting um, in the beginning of the year to our um, 
uh, not meeting in, in, in the middle of the year. Those numbers are going down. And we do know that we still, by looking at these, some of our grades fell flat um, and some of them have some more work to do. But we recognize that and we, we definitely address those with our teams. And so in, um, at our May meeting, you'll hear from our assessment committee with a recommendation on what we're going to do about this. Th that's another group that has been, mm -hmm. um, it is, it's been tedious for them. I mean, the amount of research they're doing, they're trying, we're trying to get this right. Um, because we want something that's going to help <coughs> give us a really good indicator of where our students are. We also do not want to test our kids to death. Like that is a really important piece of it. Um, so we're looking at, uh, th there's a great assessment that everybody really liked, but it's it's like a two hour exam three times a year. Like we're not doing that. So you just keep going back to trying to find like what what's the right balance that's gonna help really give us the best indicator of where students are. So like I said, this year, and Jill to your point, the teachers are really using this to just look at standards and skills um, to help you know make sure that kids are are at grade level uh, and beyond, frankly, in, in some in some cases. But. Any questions? Anyone else have any questions for that detailed update on the superintendent's mid cycle evaluation? Oh, thank you. That was 20 minutes for the record. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed if I turn the page ahead as you're talking. And, and trying to keep pace, yeah. Take a fast Trying to stay a step ahead. <laughs> Thank you, um, Mr. Superintendent and Madam Assistant. So now we will move on to the report of the superintendent, item C, review and approve athletic and student life director job description. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> in your packet, there is uh, a job spec for the director of athletics and student life. Um, and I would like to thank Carrie and um, Tara who are very involved in, have been very involved in athletics this year, trying to keep things moving in the right direction. Uh, and also we're very helpful in putting together um, the job description to, to make sure we're, we're, you know, we've got the right what here as far as what we're looking for. Um, and as the um, school committee knows, this is uh, designed to help us get our athletics program so it's really robust to increase the engagement um, and you know participation, but also to help us establish other extracurricular activities across the system. We know kids do better when they're just when they're plugged in, and so we're trying to get them um, involved. Um, in our school in our school community so things like intramurals um, after school evenings summer vacations um, looking at other different extracurriculars looking at really having a liaison with our community so partnering with you know the heads of our soccer and um, it looks like little leagues coming back making a comeback which is awesome so trying to create those pipelines similarly with basketball in the blackstone um, and millville youth basketball league um, so um, I think this position has a tremendous opportunity to do something really, really powerful for the kids in our community. Uh, and frankly, I think it's, it's, it's far reaching than the bell to bell school day. I mean, this is designed almost to not be that, <laughs> to look at all that out of school time and to make sure our kids are involved in uh, really positive, um, productive things. So this description outlines um, the qualifications, um, the responsibilities for athletics and student life. Um, it has been um, um, reviewed again. Carrie and Tara were instrumental in this. Uh, Jill Fowlis, Jill PG, Keith, uh, Jessica Sinclair, HR specialist, did a ton of research on other AD type jobs, as, you know, student activities kind of positions. Um, was very helpful in, in researching all types of qualifications as far as certifications and um, that we would be looking for. Um, so it is in front of you this evening. And if it is approved this evening, we will post it tomorrow morning as a tentative uh, or anticipated posting uh, given the budget. So making sure that our budget goes. Any uh, questions or comments? Does this position offer benefits? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a 12 month. Uh, non-union full-time position. Yeah. Anyone else? It looks as pretty well-rounded. Looks like it's a lot of community engagement 
building bridges to the school district as well as the uh, community um, uh, parks, you know, parks and dealing with the parks and other. Um, I do have one question. Sure. Can we add anything to this? Yeah, that's like what a this recommendation. Is for. Yeah. Can we add something about um, coach communication and uniforms? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. We have a we have um, underneath the bullet that uh, prepares, presents, implements athletic budget, facilitating purchase supplies, uniforms, equipment, supervises storage and care of all athletic equipment. You, you I'm wondering something more? if we need to elaborate on the uniforms, just um, like the inventory. You know yep. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. Um, I guess just making that. sure that every sports team is is being checked on their inventory and things are returned i don't know maybe just elaborate a little more on that i'm not sure we can call that out as it's like separate yeah separate piece yeah yep more or less like the cycles of uniform I, i'd like the cycles but i'd like to make sure it, um, I guess just making sure the uniforms are returned, just, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No surprises. At yeah, the end no of surprises. The season. Like, oh, hey, we Inventory don't have enough for this. Yeah. Now we need to purchase this. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Got it. That way it stays on cycle, I guess, is essentially where I'm going. So, like, the, the ordering, the care, the inventory, yeah. specifically yeah. to the uniforms and. Yeah. Well, we can definitely add that. Any other? Uh oh, I have one. Yep. <laughs> I have notes. On. I'm trying to read my notes. <laughs> um, <coughs> is I'm not sure. Is it in here about like the busing to practices and stuff, like the shuttle bus, communicating that kind of stuff, the transportation for practices and. Uh, I mean, there's a communications I'm piece, wondering if but we it need doesn't like a transportation call out. Thing. There is a transportation bullet, transportation. but you got it. It's where is that? Not transportation. Not specific for enough. Is that four or five. like six down? I think arranges transportation for athletic yeah, contests. Yeah, the games. It, it says, says more we games, need the practices not, yeah. too. Arranges transportation for athletic contests participants. I'm only mentioning that because some of the middle school students will get bus to the high school for their practices or to Roosevelt or something, just. Well, on a positive note, the town of Blackstone is, will have a warrant article <coughs> for a sidewalk going to Roosevelt. Next. Uh, coming up, so maybe they can get their exercise jogging now. <laughs> Down from Federal? Yes, from oh, Federal, from here nice. to, to, um, to make yeah. sure. It's yeah. a dangerous but, corner. Yes. Yeah, I remember the kids used to go from the high school. And we used to drive. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, that was part of the warm up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, something around arranges <laughs> transportation for athletic contests and practices or some, something like that? More or less, like coordinates transportation for all events requiring. Yes, yeah. Requiring. Is there anything else to add to that? So I, I would ask for a motion to approve this with the. To approve the job description, uh, the the job description for the athletic director and student life, athletic director of athletics and student life, um, with the two amendments um, posed by Tara. So Fair more. enough. Uh, Chuck made the motion. Second. Second of my head. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Unanimous. Great. 
We'll fix those. I'll send it to the committee um, tomorrow updated, and we'll post it anticipated. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a review of the DESE Special Education Civil Rights Monitoring Report. Okay. Absolutely. So um, the district, we're always in a cycle of some type of monitor, tiered monitoring focus from the Department of Education. And um, it's it basically it's every three years something comes around for us that is it is not just indicators <coughs> but a full district wide focus. So this year I had the pleasure of leading the um, tiered focus monitor for special ed, civil rights, um, English language learner, which will you know present that at, at, a, at one point is also our title, all of our title grants. But for this. Um, if you look in a few pages deep, it just gives you an, uh, let's see what page, just to give you a sense of what it was all about. On page five of 13, it talks about all the different phases that goes through. It's a year long process that ends with, well, it starts with, they tell us basically all the indicators, what they call SE indicators and CR, civil rights. And they'll tell us um, the areas that they're going to be looking at. So they're looking for policies, procedures, compliance, and records. Um, so for special education, besides all those, they also pull from us um, some records. They want us to look into our student records and um, kind of go through them with a fine tooth comb. Have you followed the compliance or the appropriate records are in there? Did you meet timeline compliance? Was everything complete and thorough and followed all procedures? That's just one part of it. Then, then we have to gather all the other procedures that we have in place. It could be handbooks, it could be paperwork, it could be workflows and timelines for that. Um, in addition to that, we do some indicators. So they look at things like, did we meet all timelines for initial evaluations? Did we meet timelines for early intervention? Did we meet timelines for reevaluation, transition of students? Um, after all of that comes around, usually toward the end, they threw a little few, few curveballs at you and say, and by the way, we'd also like to look at this or that. So what they also rolled into this besides special ed and civil rights is there were some regulations, newer regulations that came out from the Department of Education relative to early literacy screening. Uh, previous to that, they called it dyslexia screening. So um, they also asked for all of that information, which we already had ready to go. So we were able to give them our additional updates on our procedures for early literacy um, screenings and our next steps. They also looked at student files for that. And our early literacy screening actually is our K through three. It's a requirement um, and we do follow that. Um, we have assessments in place and they also looked at that. They send a team in too. To, they I do. Mean, they, they send in a team. They yep. crawl through our. Records. They do, and I, I check in on them. I checked in on them often, <laughs> um, but if you go back to the first level, I'm very happy to report in the middle of that letter, it does say that the department has found that our district is in full compliance with all of our unit A, uh, all of our universal standards that they assess in special ed and with civil rights and with our early literacy. And I do, I, you know, and it's not just me involved in this. Our, you know, team chairs are a part of this, making sure they're going through their files. And I will say that when we go through our own self-assessment, we always say, is, is there things that we're doing that we can do better? Do we need to adjust form? So we do make some adjustments based on that. So um, we finish that portion of it. It will come around again in another three years, and they'll look at some different things. Um, and every year that we go, there are some indicators they look at. So it was nice to be able to present that there are no progress monitoring we are 100% compliance in all the areas that they assessed us in. Yeah, no, and if I could just add to that, it is incredibly rare to not mm -hmm. have a finding, even a partial finding, mm -hmm. in one of these. So in what I appreciate, if you look on page 7 of 13, it lists underneath the universal standards for special education for civil rights and then the mm -hmm. targeted standards. There is a ton of work that is included in each one of these. Um, and you know the fact of the matter is they found zero partially implemented standards, uh, which again I that it is incredibly rare to mm -hmm. so tremendous work to our student mm -hmm. services team. Mm -hmm. And I know I will be officially presenting at some point our um, our English language learner. Um, findings as well, but I thought I could just throw out there now the invitation that we recently got yeah, because please. of that. So, um, when after we finish this, you know, we we get the notice that you're also going to have your English language learner audit. Yay! <laughs> so um, we finished that up. We did present everything. That also went very well. 
Um, because we're so small, it's a little bit of a different audit. We have to send them information. We send them records. We send them files. They do interviews. Um, also, our, in our special ed one, where I forgot to mention, surveys went out to our special education families that they did complete. If they chose to complete, they filled them out, and they also um, interviewed our CPAC for our L's. They had the same thing. They sent surveys out to our families. They look at our records, um, and after we were all done, I got a phone call um, from our liaison and um, from the Office of Language Acquisition. And based on the information that we shared with them with the work that we're doing with our family as a district that doesn't have a lot of English language learners, we were invited, they asked me to come and present at that their OLA conference, which is on April 24th. It's virtual, um, but there's several other districts, larger districts, think Brockton, New Bedford are going, but, but because we're a smaller district um, and they felt that the work that we're doing with our families um, was you know, they were very impressed. So myself and um, lead coach Mary um, are going to be presenting virtually to the to the conference. So That's we're great. very excited about that. And it is, it's, I think, I can't remember the exact title. I think I had sent it to you, but you know, our name is again, going to be out there as Blackstone Mill. We're doing great things in a, in a small district with, yeah. you know what I mean? With, with what we have yep, <laughs> to make it work. Yeah. So we'll, awesome. we're really proud of that. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but they said, you know, the other, there's a lot of, of districts that come to the conferences and they hear from the Brocktons, they hear from the New Bedfords that are large districts, but they felt that the work we're doing, um, you know, because being very successful as a small district. Yeah, and the title of that, uh, the, of it is Making Great Strides in a Small District, Blackstone Millville Regional mm -hmm. School. And that was their That's title cool. they put on yeah. it, yeah. So that'll be on the 24th, but I thought that would be important to share. So we are, you know, being recognized for the work that we're doing here, which was really great to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us on the map for positive things. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions on uh, or comments on that? Okay, we'll move to school consolidation grade reconfiguration update. Thank you. So just a few uh, quick headlines in terms of where uh, we are currently with our work <clears throat> with reconfiguring our schools for next year. Uh, we've had multiple uh, multiple staff meetings. Um, frankly, we continue to meet with the staff in various configurations of grade level, small groups, all staff, leadership teams, joint leadership teams. Uh, we've done a lot of work in that space, lots of conversations. Um, we have done something called a change of principle protocol, which was really, really interesting. We, we uh, did a two-part session. We invited all of the uh, fourth and fifth grade teachers and then all of the sixth and seventh grade teachers, um, all of the enrichment teachers, everybody. And we had a big session uh, where um, the staff had an opportunity. Actually, and Jenny, it was interesting because Jenny wasn't allowed to be at this, um, the first part of it. Um, and it was uh, run by uh, Carrie from Focus Schools. I was there, Jill was there. Um, it was interesting because we got to participate, but the principal didn't uh, at first. And that it was great. The teachers had an opportunity to just put it all out there. Like what are the priorities? What are the focus areas? What are the things they want to keep? What are the things they want to change? What are they worried about? Um, we, this whole place was covered in chart paper. Mm -hmm. Um, I, think, I think I posted some of the pictures on, on Facebook of all the teachers kind of working. It was very cool to see them all come together from the different schools uh, and work in this way. Um, yesterday, we had a, a um, combined instructional leadership team meeting. So we had members of the instructional leadership team from the complex and from the middle school working together to reset and reestablish and become one team, um, which, again, was really, really powerful. I had the chance to be uh, here for about an hour of that. Um, so uh, we continue that level of work to bring the adults together. You know, we can't just assume that you put adults in one space and things are going to be fine. Like usually there's a lot of work that needs to go into getting the climate and culture built. Um, so some really good work happening um, in that space. All of the principals have met with the teachers or educators, uh, counselors, et cetera, who are moving buildings. Um, Jill Fowles said they all did a great job and she uh, brought t-shirts. BMRHS t-shirts for all the eighth grade, you know, um, teachers coming up and it was, you know, welcome to the Charger family kind of thing that she did with everybody. And Jenny, the same thing. She met with everyone here. Christine is working with the third grade team. So the principals and the, um, 
and the teachers, and I would also argue the union are doing a really nice job of just coming together to make this work uh, for our for our students, which is great. Um, on the other side of that, also the non renewals and the reduction in force and all those things went out too. So all of that, you know, that level of work is done. Um, and so that's right. This is people work. So those are really important pieces of this transition. Um, shifting a bit to operations, Scott's done a great job working with different vendors, getting um, uh, estimates from th I think three different uh, vendors to put together a moving timeline, um, getting you know a company in place. I know it doesn't sound like a huge thing, but it actually really is because you got to get the right number of boxes, the right size boxes. When can teachers be packed? Who needs to move first? This is like a domino thing, so you got to move one before you can move the next kind of situation. Um, and so Scott has been uh, instrumental at making sure that all of that work is done and put in place and has already put a timeline in place that he shared with the principals um, around when, uh, when boxes will arrive, when people need to be packed, when things are going to get moved, when you can get into your rooms. Uh, all of those details are already out, which is great. Um, speaking of getting into buildings and things, open houses that we've set uh, in place already for grades, current grades three, four, and five. Um, I think I posted those on Saturday. Um, grade three um, will have their open house here at the middle school on May 21st. Grade four on May 22nd and grade five on May 23rd, all from six to seven. Lots of volunteers, uh, lots of teachers are coming out uh, to meet the families. Um, and then um, Ms. Fowlis will post, um, not next week, but the week after vacation, uh, the week of May 29th, she's gonna be doing the seventh grade, uh, current seventh grade up to the high school. So that will post uh, to families as well. So she's just kind of fine-tuning some of the plans for that night and finalizing the date. Um, so that will be shared uh, in about a week and a half uh, from now. So we're excited about that. And our end-of-the-year celebrations uh, principals are, are moving. Um, I've already gotten invitations to all kinds of things from Junior National Honor Society to you know, the, uh, the step-up kinds of activities and things that they're doing. Uh, I don't have all the in-the-weeds details yet, but those are, all of those things are, are being planned. Um, so lots of exciting work happening there. So to our families and friends listening at home, if there are any questions related to um, the grade reconfiguration, don't hesitate to reach out to me, reach out to Jill, reach out to the principals. Um, you know, we're, we are up to our eyeballs in, in the planning of this work, and it's all coming together pretty well. So that was it for uh, an update on that. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Next would be item F, Assistant Superintendent, Director of Student Services, Office Reorganization. So I think you have the, the handout um, in your packet. And going through this whole reorganization, we took another look at all the services that we're providing in special ed. Um, we are keeping the majority of our staff on board because we still have the same amount of students to service. But what we were looking at is we know that there's some other additional areas in the budget. So we always try to think outside of the box. Is there a way that we can take a look at what we have now, support what we have, and then support other needs in the district? So if you look at our reorganization here, you'll see that our current model in special education, we have four team chair people across the district. And our team chairs are the ones who schedule all our and hold all of our annuals, all our reviews, all our initials. Um, they oversee the workflow within their buildings for IEPs before it comes up to my office. Where we have four, um, two of them are doing some small teaching portions of that. So we looked at all the numbers and what we'd like to propose is taking those four individual teachers and moving them to three team chair people. And what ended up happening was one of our team chairs actually showed an interest in an opening that we had at the high school. So with that reorganization of team chairs, we're still keeping all of our team chairs. We're still keeping everyone. We're not losing any staff in that. And what it's doing is we're sending a, you know, one of those team chairs who, who, who initially had expressed the interest to the high school and then just um, reorganizing our team chairs. So we'll have a team chair in one building, that's K through three, a four through seven, and the nine through 12. And our out of district, I do have a candle some of that, but our team chairs do at their, um, at their levels as well. So that's the first part of this. And then any of the classes that they had where we're reorganizing, 
that those classes can be absorbed because we're you know combining a little bit more. We also currently have a clerk position in um, our office. So she is a part-time clerk and she's part-time a paraprofessional. So I'm sure you're aware that this department was a special education department. It has now become a special education department, a Title I <laughs> department, which is Title II A and IV. It has become an English language learner department. It has become all the translation and interpretations. We do all the McKinney Vento, the homeless, and we also do foster. Again, all special education. We also oversee the registration process. Um, we also do our nutrition over the weekend program, and we do all of the extended school year all the, uh, the audits and also all the special education um, transportation comes through our office. So with all of that said, we thought we had the opportunity to um, take our clerk position, take the reorganization with the team chairs because in those new positions doing three buildings, they're gonna little, be a little more support with that. What we'd like to do is move that clerk back Again, at, it, it's very cost neutral, back as a paraprofessional to absorb some of those kiddos and then bring on um, the, a full-time person to split some of the responsibilities in an office that was just special ed that has become a lot of different things. Um, and by doing that, if you look at the bottom, it comes out to cost neutral, but also being able to bring back, proposing to bring back, we'd have the savings from the team facilitate position that shows you the amount there with the benefits, and we'd have a small savings from the clerk position. <clears throat> Gives you that overall amount. Then if you look below that, we could bring on that full-time admin assistant, which is really only adding an extra half-time person to support, as well as the potential, if it's something you all would want to do, bring on a full-time LPN. Um, because I know that was a concern that was brought forward. And this would pretty much be um, cost neutral. So that's a proposal. So this would be four nurses, the, four, the LPN would equal four nurses? It would bring on a fourth, correct. Yeah, as the support, an additional support. Is that more nurses than we would have, that we have currently? Or is that a wash right as far now, as the FTE? Yeah, we have four and a half right now. So this would be three full-time nurses. So we have four and a half nurses right now. Mm -hmm. This would be three full-time nurses and then one LPN. A floater, right? Yeah. Full-time mm -hmm. amongst the three. Schools. To address some of the you know concerns and sure. things that were shared mm -hmm. at the... Because the proposal was bringing it down to three. Correct. Yeah. So this brings it back to... And that concern was... So, I'm sorry, Dan. No, go ahead. So we started with four and a half. So you had the four, one in each building, and then the floater. <coughs> so now it's kind of just getting us back to one in each building and a floater. A full-time floater. Mm -hmm. But not a registered nurse. Correct. Uh, an, um, LPN. an LPN. Which is like a notch below. Correct. That. But where we have a, a nurse, a registered nurse in each building, there would always be someone there for that supervisory piece. So this could potentially help with all of that. So if, this, so if one of the nurses is out, this LPN would take over and go into that school. Just like the same setup we had for the four buildings, it's now <clears> going to be for the three. Right. And if they all happen to be there that day, there's always things that are going on, whether it's screening or an overflow, or there's that extra person there to help support. Yeah. And I think the point stands that it's still the same amount of students mm -hmm. yes. that are going to have a need for nurse care. Mm -hmm. so. And this could help resolve that. I was surprised by the volume of mm. the, the needs for the nurses that the one who presented that night. So this pretty much, you know, quells the fears or concerns that they had and, and, and addresses the, the needs yep. presented at no core, really no cost <coughs> level. Just a cost much. neutral, yeah. Cost neutral. Any other... Uh, Comments or questions or concerns on this? All right, so we'll look for a uh, motion to um, um, approve the reorganization submitted by the assistant superintendent. So moved. Motion made by Tara. Second. Seconded by Chuck. Any other further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You oppose, the ayes have it. Thank you for that. Mr. Superintendent. Uh, Superintendent. Yes. Just uh, one I'm more. <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> one more. Columbo. Yes. Uh, FY25 <laughs> budget update. Um, 
so um, uh, most of you are probably aware that Monday evening, uh, Jill, Joe, and I attended the Millville Board of Selectmen meeting um, to answer uh, whatever questions um, they had on our uh, on the school committee's FY25 certified budget. Um, we it was shared with us that we did not need to do a presentation. Uh, we did not need to bring any materials. Um, as the committee knows, I had sent um, actually multiple rounds of materials to um, both boards of selectmen uh, and uh, the town administrators and finance subcommittee people, et cetera. Um, so um, it was a surprising um, meeting to some extent. Uh, there seemed to be some uh, folks that were on the board of selectmen that maybe haven't been following the budget cycle much at all or really aware of what was going on. Um, and so uh, I did reach out today to one of the members to schedule a sit down to go through um, you know, budget details. Joe and I will do that uh, next week um, and hopefully be able to answer whatever questions we can. Uh, but I uh, was very surprised to learn after uh, we were told we were free to go, essentially, that you know, they, they, you know, the board was finished kind of answering, uh, asking questions and things. Um, that, you know, the, that particular topic was closed for the evening. So we left. Um, and, uh, but later on in the meeting, uh, the Board of Selectmen took a vote to lower uh, their recommended uh, budget um, you, the school committee's recommended certified budget uh, to the taxpayers in Millville by a hundred thousand um, dollars. So uh, all of us know very well that a hundred thousand dollars is not a hundred thousand dollars. It's actually just over four hundred thousand dollars because to get Millville to their hundred thousand request, we then have to reduce the overall budget by about four hundred and some odd thousand dollars. Um, because of the 75 25 percent share um we've already <laughs> reduced the budget as the school committee knows by two and a half million dollars including it was about 17 and a half positions but it's 18 people um there there's just nowhere to go we, we're our budget is already coming in one hundred and fifty six thousand dollars less next year than our current budget right now um and i had addressed that issue and that question at millville's meeting on monday it was brought to me. Well, you have a level service budget. I said no. We're actually we're actually coming in lower. We're coming in one hundred fifty thousand, one hundred fifty. I think it's one hundred fifty six thousand dollars less. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to be sure to to share that information. Um, but um, be that as it may, um, that is what um, the board of selectmen did do. So, um, I did send a follow up email uh, to uh, the town administrator, the chair of the board of selectmen and the chair of the finance subcommittee in Millville, I know I CC the school committee on, uh, making sure that they understood very clearly what the Massachusetts general law states are on regional finance and a certified budget from the school committee to the member towns and what needs to be presented. So it was confirmed that they will present their recommended budget, but yes, they will have the school committee certified number in there as well. Um, um, and there, the uh, Board of Suckman is meeting again uh, for Millville on April 22nd. Um, and we will be in attendance uh, that evening, um, again, to see if there are any questions, to see if we can be helpful in any way. Um, but that's where that issue currently stands. We, I did invite them here this evening if they wanted to bring their concerns to the school committee. Um, so um, I did offer that twice uh, to them. And we'll see them at a future meeting if there are issues. I don't want to speak for the committee. But. Um, and on the other side of our house, um, we've had, I've had some very um, productive conversations with the chair of the finance subcommittee. Um, and I believe we are attending their meeting on May 2nd um, to meet with the Blackstone Finance uh, subcommittee answer whatever questions uh, they may have. Uh, we um, are also going to put out uh, to the community, if there's any interest, some community conversation around our budget to see if people have any questions. We might do a virtual thing. We could do an in-person thing. But to just sit down with the, you know, with the folks in Blackstone and Millville and just talk about our budget and share what's in it, what's not, how it you know, was created, and just to try to extend another uh, opportunity to talk to folks about um, you know, what went into the FY25 budget. So just wanted to make sure we had a moment to process that.
Is there any uh, comments or questions on anything that was just presented? Feel free to go for us. No? Uh, so you, the April 22nd is the next meeting? Yes. <clears throat> and I, I, um, I did watch the, your presentation uh, to the, I just wasn't able to get through the entirety of the meeting. Mm. Um, so I didn't see where they had recommended um, not to, uh, uh, to reduce it, uh, sorry, by 100,000 or 101,000. Was that a, a vote taken as part of their recommendation to close the, essentially their recommendations throughout the entire budget? Tara, did you, Tara saw the? So yes, um, at about the two hour, 11 minute mark, they um, brought it back up and said um, they wanted to make a motion to reduce the budget by $100,000. There was some discussion, but there wasn't really a lot of discussion. One comment made was this will likely bring us to a super town meeting by making that um, proposed um, reduction. Um, and then they just um, went on to vote to um, say they wanted to reduce it. And so were they um, making um, motions on the entirety of their recommendations on the entirety of the town's budget, or did they just specifically? That was specifically for our line. Like uh, for, for like, the town would have a budget mm -hmm. of different departments. So were they were they? So there's a board of selectmen recommendation on everyone. So were they going through that, or they just was that, was it just arbitrarily picked this? I didn't issue? actually they continue they, they watching. They reviewed, the, they reviewed the highway fire, department as well yeah. Uh, at that time. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. But it was it was just the highway department and the in our budget, the regional budget. Oh, okay. So, all right. generally, how it works in Blackstone is we make recommendations on the entirety of the budget and maybe hold certain things that we had different discussions. So, and so, do you know if they specified what portion of our budget they wanted to reduce by the hundred thousand? Like, I didn't see that in in, in, in any of the communication. I don't know if any of you noticed it, and but I I didn't see anything specifically. It was just an amount that I saw. Yeah, just an amount. It was an amount to get them to. An amount with no. They want yeah. us and yeah, to get. Um, it was an amount to get the school district in mm -hmm. line with their, with what they're looking for as far as uh, their guidance to their departments. I'm yeah. just curious if they wanted to cut a hundred thousand from transportation, their capital cost. Uh, yeah, they didn't, didn't, uh, didn't say that. Yeah. <clears throat> no, so it's, chances are it's their additional contribution. That but you're right. They did mention going back to I think it was a January um, guidance that they had. Received yeah, from the town administrator. They, um, I know the uh, communication was that we need to fall in line with their guidance that they gave to all their departments. It's my understanding we're not a department of each town, we're our own municipality. So, why would we fall in line with other departmental budgets? You are, we are, uh, yeah, we are our own separate independent uh, political entity, as you know. Uh, Created by the town, so I don't understand the guidance uh, recommendation on that. But um, um, so they can make a recommendation that, that, that so just the finance committee's recommendation is what the motion is on town meeting floor. So it appears as though in the email that mm -hmm. they suggested that you they had the consensus of the finance committee the first email said yes then the second email um, that I got uh, from the town minister today said the finance subcommittee has not taken a formal vote yet but the first the first email that we received said to your point that there was consensus among the finance subcommittee members at in the room in the audience that agreed with them and I don't think they could they didn't open a meeting because we were. Have a quorum. They didn't have a quorum. Like, we were that. sitting there and they didn't yeah, have a vote, so. right? Did I? I could, yeah, yeah. Yes. they didn't have a quorum. Yeah, they didn't no. need to open a meeting. So, so the board of selectmen is speaking, in, on behalf of or alluding to. So the finance committee is a separate entity, appointed by the moderator for separation and checks and balances. And the board of selectmen suggested, or the town administrator suggested, on their behalf that the consensus is with. So they have their own internal issues because that right there is not a separation of, uh, of the checks and balances right. there. So, 
So we, we do have options. Um, I mean, the, the most reasonable option would be to petition, hopefully to reach back out to the Board of Selectmen and so they are aware of the, the implications of their vote is a 400 and plus thousand dollar reduction to the school budget that's already been reduced by 2.5 million. That would be the, the uh, diplomatic way to go about it and if unsuccessful with that, then petition the residents of the town of Millville to understand the impact that it's gonna have on the students um, that four hundred thousand is about another seven teachers. F FTAs. Yeah, 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 it's a lot. So, and and probably thirty-five in a classroom with the yeah, the extent, right. yeah, yep, yeah, right back to yeah, um, and I'm being thoughtful because my emotions inside on this matter is a little. Is, I'm in a different seat now, so I have to. Um, but um, we also, you know, petition the residents to, to at town meeting to to do the right thing. But it will end up with a at a regional, a district wide town meeting um, if the town goes that way. Because I, I, the town of Blackstone is not. I don't. I don't feel as though they will support this reduction. The parents and and, and I, I don't think the. I think, well, based on, uh, I mean, watching that and you being asked by one of the members of the uh, Board of Selectmen for the, for the line by line item. Mm -hmm. And I'll give credit to the chairwoman and, and the town administrator. No, we've never asked for that, she yeah. said. And, and, but we had a, 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 a joint meeting with boards of selectmen and finance committees just several weeks ago. And, and the attendance there was telling by, by the communities and, and um, and the information is always available, so it's disingenuous to state that you know you haven't been, we haven't been, or and the administration hasn't been forthcoming. I mean, and I'll give credit to Mr. Uh, Mr. Caruso, the town administrator, who said on several occasions during the beginning of that meeting that we've been very forthcoming and a lot of work was done into that. So I would argue that although Millville has had great services in the past. They have great people running those services that are doing the best they can with year-over-year -year budget cuts, and this is the last, you know, in my opinion, you know, and nothing from the law enforcement, the fire department, the library, senior center over there. They have been, you know, bludgeoned with budget cuts over the years, and and this is the last, you know, great thing that they they have. Uh, that, that because we're separate, to your point, hasn't been able to be crushed by their irresponsible, you know, leadership and, and budget cuts. So um, we have options, and we'll we'll start to. I would say we'd start the diplomatic way. I don't know. I I don't know if I'll attend that April twenty second. <laughs> I'm tired of going to selectmen's meetings, needing a police detail. You know, so. Uh, it's just unfortunate that they they would uh, take that course of action, um, kind of blindsiding you, you right. know, uh, the other night. But we'll get through it. And at the end of the day, that's the provision in the regional agreement. Uh, we'll get us through it. And and but we would have. I would recommend we move quickly on that. Right after, like the day after that town meeting, we start the notification process. Because I remember the one twelfth budget mm. nonsense from a, a few years ago, and that's mm -hmm. just no way to. We get a lot of things. You have, you know, the administration has, as as you guys, a ton of stuff on your plate, and and this political nonsense you shouldn't have to deal with. So, we are here to support. We will fight that good fight, and get the money needed to properly, and responsibly educate the students of the district. Thank you. That's all I have on that. So. Anybody else? All right, we'll move on to uh, business office report. Joe? Yeah, Joe. Joe. Welcome. And, Thank you very uh, much. You survived your inaugural meeting at the Nobel <laughs> Board of Selectmen. I did. I did. I'm, just gonna... I'm getting through my third week. So. Uh, you do have your financial report in your packet uh, that as, as of April 9th of uh, this year. Uh, in the three weeks I've been here, I've been looking at some of the activity and approving some of the purchases and things that are happening. 
and it does appear that you know we will be able to meet the school committee's expectations on how we're going to end the year end positively um, and we'll be taking steps to make sure that does happen going forward too uh, I'd like to say to you if you have any questions feel free to ask not sure I can answer every single question right now after three weeks, but I would do my best. One thing I did want to mention, though, too, is I'm in the middle of uh, creating a, a different layout of a report that I'm used to presenting, and it's more of a projection report. It'll give you the actual activity to, through that, that month to date, that <coughs> fiscal year to date, but also some projected assumptions that are made that'll carry us to the year end that will change over time throughout the year, but it'll give you a good idea to see what number we're looking at towards the end of the year. Hopefully I'll have that ready for you by the next meeting. Great. It should. Um, that's really all I have to report right now. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. And then your personnel changes is uh, it's in your packet just to be placed on file. <laughs> Thank you. And that brings us to Last but not facilities least. update, Mr. Uh, facilities Manager. Good evening. So over at the high school on um, the baseball softball fields, we have got more infield mix on order. There are some low spots on the girls' softball field that tend to pond up, and we'd like to fill those in and hopefully get you know, some better drainage there. Plus, we'll have it to fill in the baselines on the boys' baseball fields, as well as the batter's boxes. They always get dug out and, you know, big valleys and digging in. So it'd be good to have extra mix on hand. Um, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but we put up a fence, a uh, temporary fence on the softball field. Looks amazing. Good. It is a world of difference. I was a little skeptical at first and you know, I said we're gonna put a fence, temporary fence up there. I'm like, oh no. But it really, it pops. It, it looks like a softball field now. It's amazing. It's like night and day. Um, tennis courts. Along the bottom of the fence, in some areas, the fence is curling up so the tennis balls are able to roll right out of the courts. So um, during April break, I'm gonna get some rebar, I'm thinking, and I'm gonna stake it to the ground, and this will keep the fence from curling up. I'm gonna need about 40 pieces of rebar, so I'll run to Home Depot, purchase that, and we'll get that in. Should take care of the problem. Um, I don't know if I'm sure you noticed the dirt piles on the baseball fields. Um, a lot of that is the old infield mix that I took off the girls' softball field. And when they put in the parking for the handicap on the track, I saved that loom as well. Um, my plan is to fill in the back of the rock and on top of the rock, clear out all the trees. And this way we'll be able to maintain it better with the mowers and stuff. And hopefully at some point put a flagpole up there and Maybe have a charges flag flying. We'll have to create nice. one of those, but that's my dream. Um, <laughs> I'll donate my personal time with my personal tractor. Um, the only issue I have is getting rid of the shrubs, the trees, and stuff. And we'll help with that. I appreciate that. Have someone who can help with that too. I didn't know if we wanted to maybe save some of it for a bonfire in the fall. I don't know. There's something <laughs> there that go. we can consider. You can have it right on top of the rock. Um, but yeah, that's my vision for that. Uh, spring break projects over at the high school. Um, we're going to start cleaning the courtyard, <coughs> up, getting it ready for graduation, washing the exterior windows, washing the carpets around the main office area. And over at the middle school during the spring break, um, you can see the head custodian's going around already, patching up the columns, getting them ready to paint and fill in all the chips and whatnot. And, uh, painting in the stairwells as well, and doing all the air filters on the rooftop units. Uh, that includes checking the belts, greasing the bearings, um, and that goes for the 35 exhaust fans that are on the roof as well. They all have motors and belts in them too, so they all got to get greased. That's a two-day job right there. That's pretty intensive. I've done it many a times, I know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Moving on to JFK AF Maloney. Uh, recently, we got a new leak in one of the kindergarten classrooms. It appears to be coming in from around the, one of the vent pipes that goes up through the roof um, from the kitchen sink that's in that area. Uh, trying to track down the leak. Um, so far, nothing with this storm, but again, we haven't had the two inches of rain that we had the last storm either. Um, there are some old leaks that are still 
rearing their ugly head up there. Um, slowing them down, we're working on it. it. And it depends which way the wind blows as well. So um, we'll get to them. We'll get them. We'll get them sealed up. Also, one of the air compressors, um, the cylinder on it was making some loud rapping noise. Um, I feared the worst. I thought it'd be a piston going bad, rod bearing. Turns out it was just a weight on one of the centrifugal clutches. Um, they've ordered the parts, should come in. Uh, relatively cheap repair. Uh, well, spring break project's going on over there. They're gonna strip and wax the cafeteria floors as well as the JFK gymnasium floor. <coughs> They're going to retrieve all the balls and badminton birdies and stuff up on the heating units out of there as well. And they'll grease and <coughs> check the bearings on those units as well. Check the belts. I was like, what gym equipment is on the roof? <laughs> <laughs> um, Millville Elementary School, not much going on there. We continue to run the water for two hours a day, sometimes longer. Uh, they have a new water engineer there now. And he's got my phone number. He calls me. He says, can you run it another two hours three hours um so he's he's diving in he's getting his fingers wet you can say um and let's see uh oh the data closet um little pump on an air conditioner split split mini split unit um the motor went bad so we had to shut that down for a while we just ordered the new pot i installed it today and it's up and running. We've got air conditioning to keep the electronics cold in that room. So that completes my report. Any questions? Have they implemented the uh, remote monitoring? Do you know uh, of the water controls? Yeah. Is that in up and running? I believe so, yes, because when he calls me, he can see it on his end, so he knows how much chlorine is being used. So it's a step in the right direction. That's a great step in the right direction is it is it but is it automated yet it's not automated no, I, thought, I don't think it's it does automated that, they can just monitor like you monitor it remotely okay yeah. but they were it able, was a, it's it's end goal it's, to be automated. Automated. it's going to get automated okay right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. i was gonna say but well, it's was a quick yeah mm -hmm. step in the right direction yeah yeah credit where credit's due yes and, absolutely oh, yeah. yeah 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 they didn't saw some new devices uh, a couple of weeks ago um Probably i just don't know if it's fully up and operational you did. Yeah, I did. Okay, thank you. Oh, well. well, thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Thanks, Scott. Nice. Great work. Thank you. School committee forum. Does anybody have anything they'd like to? I, I suppose I could go in order, but Ted, do you have anything? No, nope, all set. Uh, Matt? Two community things going on in the next few weeks uh, for everybody to be aware of. On the 18th, um, during school vacation week at the Blackstone Public Library, they'll be having a uh, community showcase night uh, for their local organizations. Um, so come on down and take a look and see what Blackstone is offering over there. Um, and then we've been working on the May 11th community uh, community Day event, uh, the District of One event. So things are going very well with that. And uh, we just had a walkthrough yesterday of all the different things that are going to be there between where we're going to park the horses and where the helicopter is going to land mm -hmm. um, to, you know, just where all the different vendors are going to be. And so that's uh, shaping up to be a real big event. So look forward to that. Does the district have a table at the library? We yes. do. Yes. Um, very good. And the, yeah, the May 11th event, I talked to with some Blackstone police officers and they have a... They're very excited. They, yes, it's, it's, it's going to be a must-see. <laughs> I hope yeah. nothing happens anywhere in the state of Massachusetts. <laughs> We're going to have gonna everybody right at the high school. <laughs> well, well, be good shit. We don't want anything to happen. We're going to be great. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll be very <laughs> safe. If the call comes in, you're going to... Yeah. You'll see the face, the Facebook post will be lit up oh, with yeah. the what's in the sky. We had fun laying it all out yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I almost said the Facebook like an old man. <laughs> the Facebook. Uh, Tara. Okay, and Tara. I'm um, just, um, I know with um, the reorganization, the PTOs are looking for more volunteers to um, 
keep the PTOs running. So if anyone out there is interested, get to a meeting and um, help keep the activities going for those kids if you want them to keep going. Okay, thank you very much. I thank um, the board of having the, con the committee of having the confidence of uh, putting me in this position, I think. Uh, but I look forward to a uh, onward and upward and positive uh, keep the positive momentum going for the for the district and we will it appears that we will have a couple of bumps that we will have to navigate coming up in the next month or two that we will get through and keep moving forward and um, that's all we can do uh, the next school committee meeting is May 9th 2024 at 6 p.m. here um, we will be um, going into executive session and not coming and not coming back out so I will um, entertain a motion to um, um, exit this meeting to for the purposes of going into an executive session. So moved. Motion made by Matt. Second. Seconded by Tara and Ted. And I'll just do a roll call vote. Ted. Yes. Matt. Yes. Tara. Yes. Tara is a yes, and I am a yes. Thank you very much, and have a good.